On this day 47 years ago, Apollo 11 became the first space flight to land humans on the moon. Astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history during the 20 and a half hours they spent on the lunar surface. Today, at the age of 86, Buzz Aldrin continues to explore, inspire, and advocate for space travel. In his book, No Dream is Too High, Life Lessons from a Man Who Walked on the Moon, Aldrin reflects on the journey that led to his role in the historic moon landing and shares the lessons he learned getting there and the lessons he has learned since. I had the opportunity to speak with Buzz Aldrin at the Space Shuttle Pavilion on the deck of the Intrepid Museum, and I asked him why he decided to write his book. Maybe it's the same reason that uh, I, I played uh, a cameo with John Travolta in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first uh, public appearance sort of things. It, it sort of keeps me uh, in front of the public as a uh, versatile person, mm -hmm. not just a state old uh, MIT bookworm or a Dr. Rendezvous. <laughs> it was not exactly nickname? complimentary. <laughs> um, so, so the book. You, so you wrote the book because you wanted to. Well, well, it, it was it was a way to, <laughs> to put disjointed. Huh. <laughs> uh, Thoughts, ideas that uh, have come to mind. Let's talk about you and, and Neil Armstrong. I mean, you guys couldn't have been more different, but the way you write about him in the book is as a brother would write about another brother. Well, I first met him, uh, I was visiting Ed White, because Ed had a house <clears throat> next to uh, Neil's. And I go over to see Ed, and uh, here's this guy roller skating around. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that's Neil Armstrong. Well, <laughs> he was unusual, mm -hmm. uh, not that easy to get to know, according to uh, other test pilots that, that uh, I talked to. Get. But when we were put together as the backup crew for Apollo 8, we worked very closely together. Instead of him sitting on the left and I'd be on the right, we sat, I sat in the center. Mm -hmm. So we could uh, go over the things for liftoff and and, and the mission, but Neil and I work quite close together. It's yeah. funny because a lot of people make, and you yourself talk about it in the book, about who was the first one to step on the moon and who was the second one. Uh, for, a, for a period of time, you didn't like being referred to as the second guy on the moon. Uh, always. The junior person had been the one that went outside, as I was on uh, Gemini 12. Right. So there was the people that thought that's, the way it should start with uh, the outside activities that were relatively complex in a short period of time. Uh, but that's not the symbolic. Because of the symbolism, the old protocol where the second yes. in command would go down was changed no. so that Armstrong, who was in command, well, was the guy who walked out and made the first. Yeah, it was never that. Uh, firm, uh, yeah. but there was, there was a movement either way. And I felt, okay, what, what is my role in this discussion? Should I say, oh no, it's not the training. Yeah. Uh, that's not so bad. Après vous, monsieur. <laughs> no, I felt that there was an argument. There was a discussion, a point of view. Mm -hmm. And I knew, and I mentioned this to some of the astronaut who would later become lunar module pilots, that here is a precedent. Whatever we do here is going to be done for the rest of the missions. <laughs> but you say you came to accept that. You came to accept that. How did you come to accept the fact that you were... Well, it, um, you, you don't hear yourself wince every time. <laughs> but I, I had a very bright, distant cousin, and he was paralyzed, but he would advise governors and others in California. And I would share with him, and he said, Buzz, you can't change history, just accept things. And, and I think acceptance, uh, instead of mm -hmm. objecting to the lousy deal I got, mm -hmm. you know, why me? Yeah. Uh, 
you can't change things. And uh, if more people accepted what was coming along, we'd have so much greater harmony. It's almost 50 years since you mm -hmm. set foot on the moon. I can't believe that you didn't think that by now we would be much farther ahead on space exploration and space travel. Am I wrong? There was in 1969 a space task group that looked at the future. The vice president was in charge of this. And there was a, uh, uh, a strong intensity of space travel, a medium and, and a not so strong. Even the not so strong reached Mars before the year 2000. Really? Yep. Wow. Uh, so what happened? We didn't know that much about but going happened, there, what, but there was yeah. the spirit, see? The spirit Why then. did the spirit leave us? Public apathy. I gotta say that. There were other things. So you think somehow the space program was somehow associated or tainted with all things that uh, military and it's not just an apathy but a certain hostility <laughs> developed towards it? If we can go to the moon, why can't we go to the moon? <laughs> we couldn't because the management of the program of President Bush to go to the moon uh, made some bad decisions. And, and they wouldn't, weren't helped by others. Now, some of your fellow astronauts were proponents of going back to the moon. Well, of course they are. Their life, their career was getting into a space program and retiring, doing their thing. And it wasn't, how do we get to Mars? Mine is, how do we do that? So, so Let's assume things change drastically, the mentalities change, and there's a new movement for a Mars uh, yeah, program. We've got to get it going. <laughs> if it were to happen today, if today the decision was made, like Kennedy made the decision to go to the moon, if the decision was made that strongly, when's the earliest that we could have somebody walking on Mars? Well, I don't think the rush would be that important. Uh, Mars has been there a long time. <laughs> uh, and, and we need to build up or it'll... Yeah. No. If, if somehow the opportunity arose for you to be able to go to Mars, no. would you? No, you no. wouldn't go? I, you know, I, uh, I wasn't much of a Boy Scout, but I did go to summer camp and I learned to do things <laughs> here and there. Uh, I'm a scuba diver. But there's not that much liquid water on <laughs> Mars. So final uh, question, final question. What do you hope will be your greatest legacy? Uh, a space futurist, or a futurist in space, a statesman for space. I'm a global statesman for space. Uh, not just the US. We don't want to compete with China especially not just cooperate, we want to bring together to help the nations. Well, Buzz, thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you, well, sir. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs>